It seems like a lot of banks are implying the same thing in their numbers, use of balance sheet. We're hearing that again and again, using their balance sheets more aggressively. Is this a new model, kind of going back to the old one as they try to compete with private credit and private asset managers? They got to use their balance sheets and they find ways to do it even with all the regulatory capital. Well, I, I, I think that that's going to be key because we've just gone through a moment where the banks in general have lost market share to non-banks. And I, I personally believe in a 5% yield world with a flat or inverted yield curve, it's going to be harder to get financing than when money was free during COVID, okay? So having access to a balance sheet that's reliable is going to become more important to banks' clients. And over time, it could be part of the moment that helps these banks regain some share from, uh, from that moment in time. Forgive me, there were years when a lot of these bank executives were saying that they can't do this, that they are hamstrung, their hands are tied because of financial regulations. What changed? Well, I, believe me, there, I don't think any bank's going to step outside of the financial regulations. I think it's just core blocking and tackling, which is uh, having reliable access. I think what's changed is the other markets aren't as easy. So zero interest rates meant that it was very easy for non-banks to be able to raise financing to be able to enter the market. It's going to be harder for non-banks to raise funding to serve bank customers. So I think that's what's changed. Not the banks, but I think it's the other items and other conditions. You said you like Goldman Sachs. Shanali was talking about how Ted Pick, his whole business has been um, uh, really the trading and potentially we'll get a read through Morgan Stanley tomorrow. What other banks do you like? Well, we like Truist very much. It's one of our favorite ideas. It's one of the biggest banks in the nation. Um, they sold their insurance broker for a whopping price recently. They're going to trade. And what you don't see now is that they haven't put the gain into their financial statements yet. So the stock's really trading around 115 a tangible book, which is a very low valuation for one of the best banks in the nation. It's got a 5.7% yield. The next time that dividend changes, it's going up, not down. So, so our view is at a single-digit P.E. ratio. For a bank that's got one of the best franchises in the country, that is, uh, I would say, our largest uh, bank idea at the moment, and we're pretty bullish on that one. And then, you know, they're also doing a restructuring. They got a little bit off sides after their merger, and we think the new management team is very focused on fixing things. When you look at the loan market at the moment, what do you make from it? Because I know in your notes you talk about the seasonality of it. Slow. Slow. It's slow. We're, what we're seeing in all the results that have come out, loans have actually been a little bit lower than we expected. And, and when I watch, you know, look, we've had three, now four banks report. Our sure. firm files 225. We got a long way to go. But what do I think? I think delay in the pivot. So our bull case on the stocks, and, and we're market performed, so the bull case, we're, we're pretty balanced. But the bull case is that we're going to get a pivot and acceleration into earnings going into 2025. To the extent that we get less rate cuts, less growth, it probably pushes that back a little bit for when we see an acceleration in earnings.